I'll never be broke another day in my life. in life for free but you can give them to the birds and bees I want money that's what I want that's what I want that's what I want I'll never be broke another day in my life you would be if it had anything to do with me hi DPR Jones here for the sake of clarity I'm calling Peter Popoff this Peter Popoff, a cheat, a liar, a fraud, a con artist, a charlatan, a deceiving low-life exploitative worm. During the course of this video and the following one, I intend to deal with these matters. Firstly, who is Peter Popoff? Secondly, what were his old scams and what is he up to now? Thirdly, why I call him a cheat, a liar, a fraud, a con artist, a charlatan, a deceiving low-life exploitative worm? And lastly, what you can do about it. So who is Peter Popoff? The Wikipedia entry gives brief details of his background. These are largely unimportant for my purposes. His activities began around 1970 and by the 1980s he'd become a popular television evangelist and faith healer. In the early 80s he was exposed by James Randi as a fraud. I'll let James Randi explain. <laughs> During the 1980s, I entered a world that I found filled with fantasy and rife with abuse. The world of faith humor. I developed a special interest in a television evangelist named Peter Popoff. And God told me, he said, you smite that cancer with your fist. At the time, Popoff was pulling in nearly four million dollars a year, healing people on his miracle crusades. Amen. To his followers, Popoff seemed to have divine powers. He knew their names. Stand up, Alice. As well as the afflictions they'd come to cure. God is touching that thyroid condition right now. God is touching your nerves right now. God is touching your eyes. Just lift up your hands, get ready. Here it comes. He also knew the personal details of their lives. You're hear good news from Charles before everything is over. I'll tell you, he's going to be completely delivered because of your prayers, because of your faith. Here it comes, complete healing in Jesus. Woo! Mighty name right now, right now, right now. Amen. It's all right to praise the Lord. I suspected that Popoff's revelations were other than divine. The radio scanner we brought to the hall picked up a decidedly worldly source. Hello, Petey. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. Popoff was being prompted by his wife through a wireless earpiece. You want to get rid of this walker, sister? Oh, glory. How long have you been walking on that walker? Three years. Three years. She lives at 1627 10th Street. 1627 10th Street? Is that right? That's right. She has arthritis all over. Burning this arthritis right out of your body. Take a few steps just to make the devil mad. Hallelujah. That's it. Just move around a little bit. There she goes. Just walk with me. Oh, glory to God. She's not going to need that walker anymore. God's just putting new strength, new health. Burning that arthritis out of her body. Just keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was able to arrange for another broadcast of the Miracle Crusade on The Tonight Show. But this time, the wireless prompting was included. In 1987, Peter Popoff declared bankruptcy. But, to use an analogy I've used before, it wasn't long before the dog returned to its vomit. The cheating, lying, rip-off merchant, the fraudster, the con artist, the charlatan, was soon back to his old tricks, as this short clip from Inside Edition shows. After the scam was exposed, Popoff dropped out of sight and declared bankruptcy in 1987. I'm gonna this walker! But that was then, and this is now. Pop-Off is back, and business is better than ever. 
He operates out of this giant facility east of Los Angeles. According to tax returns, Popoff's ministry took in more than $23 million in 2005. He paid himself more than $600,000. He paid about $600,000 more to his wife and two kids. He drives this $100,000 Porsche, and he lives in this home worth $2.1 million. Where does all the money for this lavish lifestyle come from? Well, people who watch pop-off shows are encouraged to send away for his free Miracle Spring Water. And that's why I want you to have the Miracle Spring Water. I'm stopping that clip there because the spring water is now old hat, as we will see in a minute. Who said you can't teach an old dog a new trick? The lying, cheating, rip-off merchant fraudster, the con man, the charlatan, the deceiving, low-life, exploiting dog, has learnt a new trick. But let's get up to speed with Prophet Pete's current dissemination, mendacity and con artistry. Now, PP is offering, amongst other things, Miracle Manor Bread. How do I know this? Because two weeks ago I went to his website. I filled in a prayer request. I kept it simple. Something I thought might appeal to PP's Christian charitable spirit. I need money. Sure enough, within a few days, PP had sent me a letter. Well, in fact, not just one letter, four letters. And in the time that I've been recording this video, I've received another one from him. They are all very similar. The only significant difference between them is the gimmick that they employ. A prayer bracelet, magic leaves, mystical salt, or as in the case of the first one, Miracle Manna Bread. All are classic examples of fourth-rate direct marketing skills with paltry attempts at personalization. Another similarity between them is the volume of paperwork that comes with them. Take the Manna Bread letter. First you have the envelope in which are three A4 sheets of paper printed on both sides in more than one color. Then there is a second envelope, another double-sided printed page inside that, then a third envelope, same again in that, and then a prepaid envelope as well. And let's not forget, of course, the sample of manna bread itself. Of course, the other thing that they all have in common is a request for money. But I'm going to leave the letters at this point, because I'll be returning to them in more detail in part two, as they feature in the section, What Can Be Done About Peter Popoff? If any further explanation is necessary as to why I call him a cheat, a liar, a fraudster, a con artist, a charlatan, a deceiving low-life exploitative worm, then it is this. I consider that his exploitation of the old... God is touching your nerves right now. God is touching your eyes. Just lift up your hands. Get ready. Here it comes. The young. Um, I, I, I want to get you. The sick. I'm going to be healed today. Do you believe Peter has the power to heal? The Lord, through him, yes. And the feeble-minded. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Do you really believe you're healed? Yes. Do you think your cancers are gone now? Yes, I believe that, because God never lies. And we stand in his word. Praise the Lord. It's disgustingly inhumane. I also consider that he endangers people's lives and may even have cost people their lives as well. He had people who were on medication, necessary medication, like nitroglycerin tablets for heart attacks, digitalis, things like oral insulin. He had them come out of the audience and throw their pills up on stage. Throw them up there. That's a blow of defeat for the devil. As you see it, this is the real danger in all the faith healing. It's one of the real dangers. The other danger is emotional dependence on charlatans like this. People who claim that they have an ability to tell you how to run your life and how to recover from disease. And whilst doing this, he's making staggering amounts of money. The only insight into Popoff's organization comes from these IRS documents. In 2003, people donated $9.6 million to Popoff's organization. Nearly a million of that was salaries paid to him, his wife, and children. By 2005, donations soared to more than $23 million, and so did the salaries of Popoff and his family. Kathy Rowe, the lady you met, says she only stopped sending Popoff money two months ago when she had no money left for food. She says she now feels that she was brainwashed by watching Popoff on television. And then he has the audacity to say this. When the Lord speaks to me, 
And a true word of knowledge comes forth. I know it. And I know it and I'll stand behind it. I'll put my life, my reputation on the line because I know God's voice. And I know the voice of a lying toad. So sue me, PP, and let a jury decide who's telling the truth. And I dare you, I double dare you, motherfuckers! Sue me, PP.